We're going to calibrate the color of this photograph of the Virgo cluster using SPCC. Before we do the color calibration, we need to unlink the RGB channels in the STF and readjust the screen contrast. This doesn't display the color correctly, but it allows us to see the data better, above all because it neutralizes the sky background color. Working with SPCC is very easy if you already know how to use PCC because the process windows of the two tools are very similar. They both have a catalog search section, a signal evaluation section, and a background neutralization section. The only significant difference between the SPCC and PCC windows is in the calibration section where SPCC has fields for the filters and camera sensitivity. SPCC calculates the color of the stars using a database with spectra. While PCC only has color data from broadband filters, SPCC has more than 300 brightness measurements for each star. Using these measurements, we can calculate the exact brightness and color each star should be for the camera and filters we're using. So, SPCC will always be much more precise than PCC. Furthermore, the spectra database that SPCC uses was collected from space, so it also has a more uniform sky coverage and no local biases in terms of color. So the calibration we get with SPCC will always be much more reliable than the one we get with PCC. We're going to start by configuring the filters we've used in this image. The drop-down menu has a list of filters that includes most of the filter brands used today. It also has sensitivity curves for DSLR cameras from Canon, Nikon, and Pentax, and generic sensitivity curves for Sony color image sensors. There are also curves for photometric filter sets from Sloan and Johnson. For this image, we use Astrodon I-Series filters, so we need to select the I-Series for each color filter. If we're using color sensors, we also need to select the three filters individually. Now we're going to select an area of the sky background so that SPCC also neutralizes the sky background when we apply it. Finally, we need to select the camera sensitivity curve. In this case, we need the Onsemi CAF 16200 sensor. Here you can see we also have curves for G-Sense sensors, the most widely used Sony CMOS sensors, and an ideal quantum efficiency curve, which considers that the camera is equally sensitive throughout the entire spectrum. Now we apply the process. Once the process is finished, we relink the RGB channels and apply the auto stretch. Now the STF is displaying a highly precise version of the color balance calculated by SPCC. Like PCC, SPCC displays the graphs indicating the linear fit between the stars in the catalog and the stars in the image. Here. PixInsight calculates what's called a color index, which in this case is the brightness in R divided by the brightness in G, and the brightness in B divided by the brightness in G. So it always uses the G channel as the reference, and it compares this catalog brightness ratio with the brightness ratio we see in the image. In other words, the graphs show us the relationship between the RG and BG ratios in the image and the ratios in the catalog. Ideally, this relationship would be linear. 
but there is noise in both the catalog and the image, so what we get is a point cloud, and we need to do a linear fit to this point cloud. Later, this linear fit will enable us to calculate the factors each of the RGB channels will be multiplied by to get the white balance we want. Let's compare these graphs with the ones we get with PCC. To do this, we select the same background area and apply the process. The point cloud in PCC will always have more dispersion than the one in SPCC. On average, we expect SPCC to be 400% more precise. In addition, with PCC and the APAS catalog, there may be local biases in the catalog colors that make the color adjustment of our photograph less reliable. For example, here we can see an area of catalog colors that deviates from the general trend, and this area on the left of this graph is slightly curved. All of these deviations will be minimized with SPCC and the Gaia catalog. But what happens if the exact filters or camera we're using aren't listed in SPCC? Imagine that instead of selecting the I-series filters here, we select the Astrodon E-series. But in our image, we're using the I-series. If we go back and execute SPCC for a second time, the ideal weights we should get now should be 1. Let's see what happens if we change the filters to other similar ones. As you can see, the relationship is no longer linear at each end of the cloud. In other words, these areas have large numbers of outliers. However, the linear fit in SPCC is so robust that even a large number of outliers won't affect the RGB factor calculations. In this case, the outliers affect the green by less than 0.2% and the blue by less than 1%. It's therefore better to use SPCC rather than PCC even if you can't select your exact camera and filters because even in the worst case, SPCC is more accurate than PCC. To find out which filters are most similar to the ones we're using, we can use the Curve Explorer. When we open Curve Explorer, we can see a list of filters and quantum efficiency curves, which are indicated by a Q in this column here. When we click on one, a graph appears with the curve we selected. We can press and hold the control key to select three curves at a time, or the shift key to select a range of curves. If we hover the cursor over the graph, we can see the wavelength and transmission. If we select a quantum efficiency curve, when we hover over it, we'll see the quantum efficiency for each wavelength. We can use this to select a set of filters similar to the one we've used in our image. Finally, we're going to stretch the image by copying the STF settings over to the histogram transformation window and from there to the image. Now we disable the STF and increase the color saturation with curves. And here we have M87 and Macarian's chain.